With the Rust language coming to the Linux kernel, it has been getting a lot of attention. And yeah, I may be a part of that attention on Linux, but I'm absolutely not the only one. But not everyone is in agreement over the merits of Rust in the kernel. But I'm not a kernel developer, I'm not a driver developer, so what we're going to do today is look at two different discussions from two very differing perspectives from people that I really respect. One discussion from Asahi Lina and one discussion from Drew DeVault. Both these people are much more well versed in this level of development than I am. So Lena is heavily involved in reverse engineering and FOSS driver development, most notably a FOSS GPU driver for the M1 Mac, and she is heavily in favour of using Rust. I'm not going to read the entire thread, but I will leave it all linked down below. There's a lot of weird debate about whether Rust in the kernel is useful or not. In my experience, it's way more useful than I could have ever imagined. I went from first render to a stable desktop that can run games, browsers, etc. in about two days of work on my driver. Now, she's not saying that literally anybody out there could write a driver in two days. What she is saying is the time relative to using C is considerably quicker. Also, this is going from the first alpha, beta version, whatever you want to call it, to a good working version. So it's not counting the initial reverse engineering and prototyping time, the initial development time to get that initial basic version. This is counting the debugging time. All the concurrency bugs just vanish with Rust. Memory gets free when it needs to be freed. Once you learn to make Rust work with you, I feel like it guides you into writing correct code even beyond the language's safety promises. It's seriously magic. Now, before anyone goes and says, oh, Rust isn't magic, you still have to write the code, blah, 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 that, it's obviously a joke, it's obviously hyperbole. There is absolutely no way I wouldn't have run into all kinds of race conditions, UAFs, memory leaks, and all kinds of badness if I'd been writing this in C. In Rust, just some logic bugs and some core memory management issues, once those were fixed, the rest of the driver just work. It doesn't matter how good of a developer you are, you could have been a dev for, you know, 50 plus years. Everyone is occasionally going to make mistakes. And in Rust, what Lena is saying here is it handles some of those mistakes for you. Now, one of the later tweets does talk about unsafe, so we'll get into that as well. After things work, single threaded in a driver as complex as this, having all the locking and threading just magically working as intended with no weird races or things stepping on top of each other is, as far as I'm concerned, completely unheard of for a driver this complex. One of the things you typically have to worry about when writing multi-threaded code is these different threads are trying to grab the same resources, and depending on the order they grab them, it might lead to a different result. This is a race condition, and race conditions are very bad. You want to have the application operate in a consistent manner. And then all the memory management just happens as if by magic. A process using the GPU exits and all the memory and structs it was using get freed. Dozens of lines in my log of everything getting freed properly. I didn't write any of that glue. Rust did it all for me. And this is one of those things where you're going to have to do it anyway. So instead of writing it yourself and potentially making a mistake, wouldn't it be better to have the tool do that for you? Okay, there is a little bit more to that. Okay, I wrote the part that hooks up the DRM subsystem to Rust, including things like dropping a file struct when the file is closed, which is what triggers all that memory management to happen, but then Rust does the rest. I actually spent more time tracking down a single forgotten asterisk in the DCP driver written in C by Alyssa and Jan already tested that was causing heap overflows Then I spent tracking down CPU side safety issues in unsafe code in Rust on my brand new driver in total. Seriously, there is a huge difference between C and Rust here. The Rust hype is real, fearless concurrency is real, and having a few unsafe code blocks does not in any way negate Rust's advantages. Obviously, if you did everything in unsafe code blocks, that would be different. But if you're using them sparingly, and you keep track of what you are doing with them, the rest of it is just magically being dealt with. So it's very clear to anybody who read this that Lena is very excited about Rust existing, but Drew DeVault isn't in that same camp. 
Among various other things, he is the original developer of things like Sway, he is the developer of Source Hut, he is a kernel hacker, he is his own programming language called Hair, and many, many other achievements. I am known to be a bit polemic when it comes to Rust. I'll be forthright with the fact that I don't particularly care for Rust, and that my public criticisms of it might set up many readers with a reluctance to enjoy yet another Rust hot take from my blog. My answer to the question posed in the title is, of course, no. However, let me assuage some of your fears by answering a different question first. Does Hare belong in the Linux kernel? Hare being his language, and he's not trying to shill his language into the kernel. The reason why he's talking about Rust is Rust is actually going into the kernel. It's the only thing worth discussing here. I have no illusions about this blog post changing that either. I simply find it an interesting case study in software engineering decision making in a major project. And that's worth talking about. And if there is nothing else you agree with in this blog post, I hope you at least agree with that. Each change in software requires sufficient supporting rationale. What are the reasons to bring Rust into Linux? And a lot of the benefits that a language like Rust might bring to the regular user space development don't really matter in the kernel space. Things like cargo and generics and whatever else you want to talk about have relatively little concern to a kernel hacker. Kernels operate in a heavily constrained design space, and a language has to fit into that design space. This is the first and foremost concern, and if it's awkward to mold a language to fit into these constraints, then it will be a poor fit. And here are some of the problems that a language designed for the user space will run into in the kernel space. Strict constraints on memory allocation. Strict constraints on stack usage. Strict constraints on recursion. No use of floating point arithmetic. Necessary evils such as unsafe memory use patterns or integer overflows. The absence of a standard library, runtime, third-party libraries, or other conveniences typically afforded to the user space. Most languages can overcome these restraints with some work, but their suitability for kernel use is mainly defined by how well they adapt to them. Because with a sufficient environment, you can write a kernel in basically any language. You could use Go, C Sharp, Java, Python. There is a video on YouTube, I'll leave it linked down below, that someone used Scratch and JavaScript. Don't do it, but it can be done. As Linus recently put it, Kernel needs trump any Rust needs. The kernel is simply not an environment which will bend to accommodate a language. This isn't some random terminal or a file manager or anything like that. This is the kernel. It must go the other way round. These constraints have posed and will continue to pose a major challenge for Rust in Linux. But on the whole, I think that it will be able to rise to meet them, though perhaps not with as much grace as I would like. If Rust is able to work with these constraints, which from what I've seen is able to work in them, then it satisfies the ground rules for playing in ring zero. The question then becomes, what advantages can Rust bring to the kernel? And based on what I've seen, these essentially break down to two points, memory safety and trendiness. And oh boy, he got into trendy languages. But we'll start with the memory safety. I would prefer not to reopen the memory safety flame war, so we'll simply move forward with the dubious assumptions that memory safety is one, unconditionally desirable. It is not, and that is why you use unsafe when it is not desirable. Two, compatible with the kernel's requirements. Once again, where it is not compatible, then you use unsafe. Where it is compatible, then you don't use unsafe. And three, sufficiently provided for by Rust. And that one you can at least have some debate about. I'll offer this quote from an unnamed kernel hacker though. There are possibly some well-designed and written parts which have not suffered a memory safety issue in years. It's insulting to present this as an improvement over what was achieved by doing all this hard work. Now, a lot of people like to quote this developer, and no one likes to reference where the quote actually came from. So let's go and do that. So this is a quote from the LWN comment section from Willy Taro, who is a very accomplished developer, worked on the Linux kernel and various other things. But it's in response to Jonathan Corbett, who is the editor of LWN, a very popular Linux news site, a Linux kernel developer, and also co-author on multiple books on Linux drive development alongside people like Greg Crower Hartman. 
Willie, I think you're misinterpreting the message. I don't hear you're doing bad. Instead, I hear, with better tools, it would be easier for you to work meticulously. I'm not taking position on whether the Rust stuff should go in, but I do think that message is worth listening to and thinking about. Improved tools have made a big difference in kernel development over the years. Basically, what he's saying is what Lena was saying. Being in C doesn't mean it's bad code, but if you're going to have to do this anyway, why not use better tools that deal with the problem and save you time having to debug stuff that shouldn't have to be dealt with? But let's go back to the article and talk about trendiness. Introducing Rust to the kernel will certainly appeal to a broader audience of potential contributors, but there is an underlying assumption to this argument which is worth questioning. Is the supply of Linux developers dwindling? And if so, is it to such an extent that it demands radical change? Well, no. Linux has consistently enjoyed a tremendous amount of attention from the software development community. This week's release of 6.0, one of the largest Linux releases ever, boasted more than 78,000 commits by almost 5,000 authors since 5.15. And Linux is a massive project with massive industry stakeholders and without a doubt, one of, if not the biggest software project in the entire world, especially the biggest if we are talking about free software. And sure, there's definitely no shortage of developers who want to work on Linux, but you can't deny the fact that by bringing Rust into the kernel, it is also going to open up the kernel to those Rust developers, because there is a lot of young developers who aren't learning C, and if they are learning a low-level language, it's going to be Rust. That doesn't mean everyone, I know there's a lot of young people who know C and they're going to be in the comment section right now, but Rust is also getting more and more popular. But let's talk about portability. Linux's portability requirements prevent Rust from being used in most of the kernel in the first place. Most work on Rust in Linux is simply working on getting the subsystems to cooperate with each other or writing drivers which are redundant with existing C drivers but cannot replace them due to Rust's limited selection of targets. And then links to this right here, Rust in GCC will help with this problem but it will likely take several years to materialize and several more years to become stable. As of a year ago, this is factually inaccurate. Everyone keeps talking about GCCRS, and I've made this mistake myself. That is very, very far from being done. But when we're talking about Rust C Code Gen GCC, this issue got closed with a merger. This is part of the Rust project already, and has been for, let's see, it got merged July 2021. Now, this solution is still not completely perfect, but it isn't going to take multiple years to materialize. But Linux is, on the whole, a conservative project. It is deployed worldwide in billions of devices, and its reliability is depended on by a majority of Earth's population. Risks are carefully evaluated in Linux as such. Every change presents risks and offers advantages, which must be weighed against each other to justify the change. Rust is one of the riskiest bets Linux has ever considered, and in my opinion, the advantages may not weigh up. I think that the main reason we're going to see Rust in the kernel is not due to a careful balancing of risk and reward, but because the Rust community wants Rust in Linux, and they're large and loud enough to not be worth the cost of arguing with. Now, last time I checked, Linus Torvalds, Greg Crower Hartman, and most of the major maintainers in Linux are not part of the Rust community. In fact, initially, Linus was very apprehensive to even consider Rust in the kernel. He was going over all of the stuff in the language and pointing out why it was not suitable at all to be used in the kernel. But as those problems got dealt with and as the discussions happened, they changed their mind. And last I checked, someone like Linus Torvalds is not a pushover. If he does not want something to happen, he is not going to let it happen. But on the whole, my opinion is that the benefits of Rust in Linux are negligible and the costs are not. That said, it's going to happen and the impact to me is likely to be at worst a nuisance. Though I would have chosen differently, I wish them the best of luck and hope to see them succeed. And even if you don't like the idea of Rust in the kernel, I hope you at least agree with that. Now, it's very clear where the community sentiment lies on these two discussions. Clearly, 
One of them is a little bit more popular. I'll let you decide which one that is. Also, Drew's blog led to some very um, amusing comparisons because of this discussion or this paragraph right here. So here we go. Do seatbelts belong in cars? What advantages can seatbelts bring to cars? Based on what I've seen, these essentially break down to two points, road safety and fashion. On the whole, my opinion is the benefits of seatbelts in cars are negligible and the costs are not. I'll let you decide if that's a good parody. So where do you stand on this matter? Are you happy to see rust available in the kernel? Do you think it'll be detrimental? Or do you not care whatsoever as long as it doesn't affect you? I would love to know. So if you like this video, I'm going to go and like the video. And if you really like the video and you want to become one of these amazing people over here, go check out my Patreon, subscribe to the Pay linked in the description down below. I've got a podcast called Tech over tea. I've got a gaming channel called Brody Robertson Plays. That's going to be it for me, and I'm out.